What is going on everyone and welcome to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. This is episode one of Geology of U.S. Cities, a mini-series where I dive deep into the geology of major cities around the country. Of course, I had to start at home here in Las Vegas where I grew up. Without further ado, let's get it. A world-renowned travel destination, Las Vegas epitomizes glitz and glamour. Most people come here for the casinos, the debauchery, and the delicious food, but beyond the neon lights, a natural wonderland awaits. You see, Las Vegas is so much more than just a world-renowned tourist destination. It's also a world-renowned place to study geology. The rocks that outcrop around the city document 1.7 billion years of Earth's history and help shed light on the story of not only Las Vegas, but of the entire world. In this video, we're going to learn all about the geologic history of Las Vegas, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let's do it. But before we get started, let me take a moment to shout out the sponsor of today's video, Vegas Vista Academy. Vegas Vista Academy is a dual-language public charter school in Las Vegas, supporting underserved communities. VVA features experiential learning both in and out of the classroom, a dual language program, small class sizes, and a warm sense of community. The school is currently K-3, through but will be expanding to K-5 through next school year, and eventually K-12. through As a public charter school, VVA does not charge tuition. Located at 4660 North Rancho Drive, VVA is an excellent choice for your family. Apply today at VegasVistaAcademy.org. <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's get this video started. We'll start by traveling 1.7 billion years in the past on the east side of town. I am standing here at a place of great geological intrigue on the east side of Las Vegas at the foot of Frenchman Mountain. This is the 1.7 billion year old Vishnu Schist Gneiss and Granite, and it represents the core of the ancient North American continent. This, on the other hand, is a piece of 540 million year old sandstone called the Tapit Sandstone. Now, if you think about the math, this being 1.7 billion years old and this being 540 million years old, there's a gap of 1.2 billion years here. And this is what's called the Great Unconformity. You have this 1.7 billion year old rock directly overlain by this 540 million year old sandstone. This unconformity represents a 1.2 billion year gap in deposition of rocks, meaning that this was a 1.2 billion year period of erosion. This great unconformity is usually only seen at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, but due to the complex tectonism and faulting here in the Basin Range, this outcrop has moved 100 miles west, has been tilted roughly 45 degrees, and now outcrops on the east side of the Las Vegas Valley a true testament to the tectonic processes at play here in Las Vegas. This is just the beginning of the story, as this 1.7 billion year rock is the oldest stuff you'll find here. But there's so much more to the geology of Las Vegas, and we're about to dive into it right now. Though the 1.7 billion year old Vishnu group at the base of Frenchman Mountain represents the core of the ancient North American continent, the area underwent a period of rifting 700 million years ago, becoming what is known as a passive margin, basically a coastline without a tectonic plate boundary, where continental crust phases into oceanic crust gradually, much like the Atlantic coast of North America today. As such, the area was under a shallow sea, deepening as one headed west. This is documented in the Neoproterozoic and Paleozoic sedimentary rocks around Las Vegas. The oldest rocks that document this marine period are outcropped in the Spring Mountains west of town and the Sheep Range north of town, in a unit known as the Sterling Quartzite. The Sterling Quartzite dates back to the Ediacaran period, roughly 635 to 540 million years ago, and is evidence of a shallow marine environment, likely an ancient shoreline on the west coast of North America. The Sterling Quartzite is a metamorphic unit, chiefly composed of quartzites and phyllites that originated as sandstone and mudstone, respectively, and contain index fossils that date back to the late Precambrian Eon. The mountains around Las Vegas contain thick limestone and dolostone units that record 250 million years of geologic history, including units from the Cambrian period through the Permian period. This is exemplified in the Spring Mountains west of town. They're composed of shallow marine sedimentary units with a combined thickness of over 30,000 feet. 
The summit of Mount Charleston is 11,918 feet above sea level, so it's kind of mind-boggling to think that the sedimentary rocks that the mountain range is composed of continue another 19,000 feet below sea level. These fossiliferous sedimentary units are indicative of shallow coral reef environments in the area until the end of the Permian period. The youngest marine sedimentary unit that outcrops around Las Vegas is the Permian-aged Kaibab limestone, a unit that also outcrops in the Grand Canyon. This Kaibab limestone is found on the east side of Frenchman Mountain and represents the most recent time that the area was under the ocean, dating back 250 million years ago. After southern Nevada's 400 million year underwater stint, the area evolved from a giant coral reef to a river delta to a vast desert, similar to the Sahara Desert or Namibia's skeleton coast. How do we know this? The rocks, of course. Luckily for us, the sedimentary units in southern Nevada and around Las Vegas are world class in that they are outcropped beautifully, simply, and are tilted so that we can actually see the oldest units outcrop to the surface and study them. East of Frenchman Mountain lies a place known as the Rainbow Gardens, named as such for their beautiful and striking multicolored geological units. Rainbow Gardens is also a place of great geological intrigue. It preserves the sedimentary suite of rocks that clue us into southern Nevada's past during the early Mesozoic era, from about 250 to 150 million years ago. The lion's share of rocks at Rainbow Gardens are continental-derived siltstones and clays, in units known as the Cayenta, Moanave, and Chinle formations. These formations document river delta environments, and contain several interesting fossils, including fish, ferns, and dinosaur tracks. Stratigraphically above these river delta formations lie some of the most famous sedimentary rocks in the world, the Jurassic-aged Aztec sandstone. The Aztec sandstone is what composes the beautiful cliffs at Red Rock Canyon and the bluffs at Valley of Fire, and it's equivalent to Utah and Arizona's Navajo sandstone. It's the same unit, Nevada just had to be unique in naming it. The Aztec sandstone is a 2,500 foot thick unit of beautiful white, pink, and red sandstone, indicative of an Aeolian, or wind-blown, sand dune environment, similar to today's Sahara Desert. Over millions of years, the sand dunes were compacted and lithified into sandstone, forming this unit. This sandstone gets its red and pink color from iron-rich minerals, and is particularly sought after amongst rock climbers. Now it's great that we have all of these sedimentary rock units that clue us into the past here in Las Vegas, but as of now the history that we have discussed has taken place in pretty flat environments, and it's no secret that Las Vegas is surrounded by mountains. So how the heck did these mountains form? Let's talk about that now. Our mountain building chapter of the story begins roughly 160 million years ago and continues to this day. Off the west coast of North America, from the Devonian to the Jurassic periods, a suite of island arcs was inching closer and closer to North America, accreting exotic terrains to the edge of the continent in places like northern Nevada and the Pacific Northwest, creating mountain ranges such as the Klamath and Wallowa Mountains in the likes of Northern California and Oregon. Mountain building events such as the Antler and Sonoma orogenies were taking place in northern Nevada as tectonic plates slammed into the western margin of the North American plate, creating structures such as the Roberts Mountain and Golconda thrusts that would be critical to Nevada's world-class gold deposits. Southern Nevada was widely shielded from these tectonic events until one day 160 million years ago. You see, everything changed when the Farallon Nation attacked. This is when a mountain building event known as the Severe Orogeny commenced. This orogeny was initiated by the subduction of the Farallon Plate beneath the North American Plate, the same process that created the Sierra Nevada Magmatic Arc. Here, things were a little different though. Rather than creating a magmatic arc a la Cascades, a thin-skinned fold and thrust belt a la Zagros Mountains in Iran was generated. A thin-skinned fold and thrust belt is a type of mountain chain that is created when a tectonic plate converges into one another, but does so in such fashion that thick sedimentary units are folded, shortened, and thrusted above other rock units, absent of regional metamorphism. This can only occur when thick sedimentary units are involved, and due to the area being a shallow marine environment for over 400 million years, the necessary thickness of sedimentary rocks was achieved to generate this thin-skinned orogeny. 
This occurs in Iran today because Iran is full of thick layers of sedimentary rocks. It was under the Tethys Ocean for hundreds of millions of years, and as the Arabian Plate converges with the Iranian Plate, these thick suites of sedimentary units are folded and thrusted, creating the Zagros Mountains. Back home, the severe orogeny generated a mountain range known as the Severe Fold and Thrust Belt, running from southeastern California through southern Nevada all the way up to Canada. This mountain building event was responsible for perhaps one of the most famous geological structures in America, which, by the way, outcrops only 20 minutes west of town in Red Rock Canyon, the famous Keystone Thrust. One of the fundamental principles of geology is the principle of superposition, stating that younger rocks outcrop above older rocks unless acted upon by an outside force. This principle clued geologists in to what was going on at Red Rock Canyon. You see, the gray rocks that outcrop above those beautiful sandstone cliffs are Cambrian in age, dating back roughly 500 million years. The sandstone bluffs, however, are composed of the Jurassic-aged Aztec sandstone, being over 300 million years younger than the rocks that outcrop above them. This area contradicts the principle of superposition, so an outside force must have been responsible for thrusting those older limestones above the younger sandstones. This outside force was a thrust fault that geologists named the Keystone Thrust, and after years of fieldwork all around western North America, geologists found that this is one of the major mountain building faults associated with the severe orogeny. The severe orogeny continued from 160 to about 50 million years ago in the area, and formed the Proto Spring Mountains, Sheep Range, and Muddy Mountains. From 50 to about 30 million years ago, southern Nevada was relatively quiescent tectonically speaking, but a new geologic event would change that, leaving lasting implications on the land and continuing to shape the area to this day. This tectonic event is known as Basin and Range Crustal Extension. As we know now, the severe orogeny was a mountain building event that was generated due to the subduction of the Farallon Plate off the west coast of North America. While it lasted for over 100 million years, nothing lasts forever, and even vast tectonic plates are finite. The Farallon Plate ran into some trouble 30 million years ago, as in what would become Southern California, it fully subducted. Now, the North American Plate was bounded by the Pacific Plate, and rather than being a subduction zone, the area was a transformed plate boundary, birthing the infamous San Andreas Fault. That LA to Vegas pipeline is real, and it turns out that it's not just about Californians moving to Nevada, it's also about Californian tectonic processes shaping Nevada. You see, once the Farallon Plate fully subducted, the Basin and Range was birthed. Geologists are still debating and studying the link between the San Andreas Fault and the Basin and Range. Correlation between the two is definite, but causation is still debated. Regardless, the tectonic processes that shaped the modern landscape of southern Nevada kicked off about 30 million years ago when the Farallon Plate fully subducted in southern California. The Basin and Range is a geologic province stretching from eastern Oregon down to Mexico, and Las Vegas is located right in the heart of it. Here, the crust is experiencing extension, likely fueled by subterranean magma that thins the crust and stretches it out. The rationale behind the presence of this magma is still hotly debated, but the outcome remains. It stretches and rotates the crust, generating hundreds of north-south trending mountain ranges and valleys, known as Horst and Graben, bounded by active normal faults, where the footwall moves up relative to the hanging wall. In Las Vegas, these tectonic processes were directly responsible for shaping every single mountain range and valley in some respect. Frenchman Mountain, for example, was rotated, tilted, and faulted, and actually moved 100 miles west of where it was deposited, along faults related to the aforementioned crustal extension. The tilting of Frenchman Mountain is what exposed all of its pristine sedimentary rock layers, allowing geologists to study the rocks and piece together the history of the area through the rocks. In Las Vegas, the lion's share of the tectonic activity regarding crustal extension commenced during the Miocene epoch, roughly 23 to 5 million years ago. Large fault systems uplifted the mountains, volcanoes erupted, forming Black Mountain near Henderson, and vast strike-slip fault systems, such as the Las Vegas Valley Shear Zone and Lake Mead Fault Zone, were active, accommodating lateral strain as the crust extended and rotated. Though the majority of this tectonism occurred during the Miocene, there are several areas around Las Vegas that are still tectonically active. One such area is the Frenchman Mountain Fault, located on the east side of town. Let's head there now. 
I am here on the east end of Washington Avenue, literally standing on the Frenchman Mountain Fault. The Frenchman Mountain Fault is an active fault responsible for uplifting and tilting Frenchman Mountain, and it's exposed here in this road cut in alluvium. So right here, this is the fault. And you can actually follow the trace of the fault in this alluvium. If you look up, you can see this linear structure, which is like a linear zone of crushed up rocks and dirt. And that is literally the Frenchman Mountain Fault. And you might be able to see that this side of the land has been uplifted relative to this side. We can see that this layer of alluvium is higher than it is on this side. It only goes to about here on this side, whereas it goes all the way up here on this side. And that is testament to the active tectonic processes at play here in Las Vegas. The Frenchman Mountain Fault is considered a dangerous fault line because of its close proximity to the city and because it could have an earthquake as strong as magnitude 6.6 .6 on the moment magnitude scale strike here, which would be devastating for eastern Las Vegas. It wouldn't destroy the city because the buildings here are built to strict seismic code, but it would definitely be a very strong, very powerful earthquake, especially given the fact that houses are literally 100 feet away from here. The Frenchman Mountain Fault is considered a listric fault, which means that it's curved and it's oblique in nature, meaning it has both strike slip and dip slip properties to it. So the Frenchman Mountain Fault is an oblique normal strike slip fault. So the normal component uplifts the land and the strike slip component, which is right lateral, meaning the land moves to your right as you look across the fault, is also evident here and it's attributed to the very eastern edge of the Walker Lane seismic belt, which is actually accommodating some motion between the Pacific and North American plates. And that is all expressed here at the Frenchman Mountain Fault in Las Vegas. Lastly, I would be remiss to not discuss paleontology in this video. Las Vegas is a world-renowned locality for paleontology, as the sediments in the valley, particularly in the northern part of the valley, are filled with fossils from the Ice Age. In fact, the area is so rich in fossils, a national monument was designated, Tule Springs Fossil Beds National Monument. This area is filled with mammoth, saber-toothed tiger, giant sloth, dire wolf, and other fossils, and sheds light on the climate of the valley during the last ice age. Las Vegas was much cooler and wetter during the last ice age, filled with coniferous forests, lakes, rivers, and meadows. The climate has since changed into the Mojave Desert that it is today. For those of you that habla espanol, you'd know that Las Vegas means the meadows in Spanish. Though the area is a dry desert, it was named Las Vegas because when the town was founded, it was filled with lush meadows and wetlands all over the valley. These springs were generated due to water percolating through the porous limestone of the Spring Mountains, collecting and pooling at the base of the range in the Las Vegas Valley. Today, these springs are still scattered across the city, in places like the Springs Preserve, Keel Ranch, Craig Ranch, Floyd Lamb, Sunset, and Lorenzi Parks. A lot of people make the joke, why the heck does Las Vegas even exist? It shouldn't exist. But the fact of the matter is, Las Vegas was not built in a random desert. It was actually quite lush and filled with water when the town was founded. It seems as though Las Vegas has always been a gathering place, from the gathering of marine organisms 500 million years ago, to the gathering of tectonic plates 160 million years ago, as well as the gathering of megafauna, Native American hunter-gatherers, and eventually rowdy tourists today. Las Vegas is a world-class place to study geology, and the story of the scenery is well deposited and exposed in southern Nevada. Las Vegas is famous for the Strip, but it's so much more than just casinos and debauchery. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about the geologic history of Las Vegas, and if you come to visit, consider looking around at the scenery and experiencing Las Vegas' beautiful nature for all of its glory. Thanks again y'all, and as always, PEACE! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!